Let's use our understanding of curvature to show that lines have zero curvature. In other words, k equals zero at all. In other words, the curvature equals zero at all points on the line. Let's look at how we've defined a line. So a parameterized line in space has three components. The x component given as x0 plus at, the y component given as y0 plus bt, and the z component given as z0 plus ct. Now remember, this parameterized set of equations describing a line is defined by being given a point on the line. That point on the line has coordinates x0, y0, z0, and a vector parallel to the line. The vector parallel to the line has components a, b, and c. Well, let's look at the definition of curvature. So curvature as a function of arc length is defined as the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to the arc length. Alternatively, we could define curvature as one over the magnitude of the velocity of the curve, which is just the derivative of the position vector representing the curve with respect to the parameter t, times the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the parameter t. Since our position vector is defined in terms of the parameter t, it makes sense for us to use this second form of the equation of curvature. So to use this, let's go ahead and find the velocity of our curve, r prime of t. This is just found by taking the derivative of our curve with respect to t. And when we differentiate each component, well, let's take a look at that. That's going to be the differentiation of a, uh, x naught rather, plus a t, y naught plus b t, and z naught plus c t. To differentiate this, we just distribute the derivative to each of the components of our curve. When we do that, we get the, for the x component, we just get a, because we have the derivative of a constant coordinate, that's x0 is a constant, plus the derivative of a t, a is a constant. So for the x component, we are left with a. For the y component, we are going to be left with b. And for the z component, we are going to be left with c. So look at this. This is just the velocity of our curve, which happens to be the same as the vector that we said is parallel to our line. So the velocity vector is always parallel to the line when we have a parametric set of equations that describe a line. So this is good confirmation for us of the work we've done so far. We now have the velocity vector. Let's go ahead and find the magnitude of the velocity vector. Since the velocity vector has components of a, b, and c, the magnitude of the velocity vector is equal to the square root of 
the sum of the squares of the components. So in other words, the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So remember, we're trying to show that the curvature of a line is zero, and the definition of curvature says take one over the magnitude of the velocity of the curve times the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with t. So we have the magnitude of the velocity portion of this expression. Now we have to find the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to t. To do that, let's go back and revisit how the unit tangent vector is defined. Remember, the unit tangent vector is defined as the derivative of our position function divided by the magnitude of the derivative of our position function. But as you already know, the derivative of our position function is just our velocity function, and the magnitude of the derivative of the position function is just the magnitude of the velocity function, which is also called the speed of the curve. This means that our unit tangent vector is a constant. It's a constant where it has components of a, b, and c divided by its magnitude, which is a squared plus b squared plus c squared. The unit tangent vector is a constant. Now that makes sense because if we look at a line in space, here is our line, described by the position vector. When we evaluate the unit tangent vector for all points on our line, this unit tangent vector for all points lies right on the line. And it's constant. It's constant because a unit tangent vector always has a magnitude of 1. And on a line, it always points in the same direction. So this is a good reality check for us for the unit tangent vector of this line. It makes sense that we should get a constant. Well, let's apply what we know of the unit tangent vector to determine the curvature of our line. So again, we are looking for curvature to be 1 over the speed of the curve, in other words, 1 over the magnitude of the velocity, times the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the parameter t. So this is 1 over the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared times the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector which the unit tangent vector is given as vector, the velocity vector, over the magnitude of the velocity vector. But this expression evaluates to zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. This means that the curvature for all points on this line is equal to zero. Well, that makes sense. Straight lines are not curved. Because straight lines are not curved, it makes absolute sense that the curvature for this straight line can be shown to be equal to zero, just like we've just done. 